FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz, and today is May 25th, 2018. First, as always, you know you make my day great by sending me emails. The first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I look at your emails, I read them, and wherever possible, respond to them immediately. And I'm pretty much caught up right now. So the email address for your reference is kl at kerrylutz.com. Well, we hear a lot about infrastructure. We hear a lot about Trump saying we need to spend more on our infrastructure. It's falling apart, et cetera, et cetera. The fact is our infrastructure is a lot like our education. We've never spent more on it and we've never gotten less money or less goods in return and less productivity in return. And there's a very good reason for that, which you're going to hear about. Uh, from Howard Komen. Uh, Howard's a private investigator, but he's investigated numerous infrastructure failures uh, all over the place in South Carolina. Howard, welcome to the show. Hi, Karen. Appreciate it. Hey, so you have, uh, in the past, you were doing investigations for the state of Car South Carolina on various uh, failures in infrastructure projects that took place around the state and you were literally the boots on the ground so first these failures happen all too often we see them we saw it with a bridge at florida atlantic university it's about 35 miles from where i live 40 miles we saw it with the expansion of the oakland bay bridge the replacement of that span where they utilize cheap chinese steel and the stuff is falling apart now you've been there firsthand how does this happen? It's real simple. If you look at South Carolina, back in 1989, I was looking for a missing bridge inspector. He had a daughter that was 12. My son was 12, and nobody would help them, so I volunteered to look into his disappearance. Mm -hmm. I got a hold of Governor Campbell, the governor of South Carolina, through a friend of mine. Carol and I knew each other, and I sent word I need to look at at what's going on with the highway department. I have a bridge inspector. Nobody's working to try and find him. And he sent me, the governor, 5,000 pages of information on plot maps with contracts, but with the caveat. The word he sent down to me was, tell Howie that he's on his own, that the highway department is autonomous, and me as the governor have no control over what they do or the money. And I can't help him aside from getting these papers to him. So first mm -hmm. of all, you have to understand in South Carolina, the highway department was autonomous. There were no checks and balances at that time. As I got into the investigation, I discovered that there was faulty construction. My guy was a cement inspector. There were some things that came to light about maybe if the cement was supposed to be coming in at 95 degree temperature and it was 102 because of the heat and humidity, it would be watered down so it would make the specification. And there were a lot of things like this that occurred. Um, there was, there's no oversight at that time here. And you have highway engineers and company engineers, we proved were in cahoots to try and get more money out of these projects by passing substandard construction when it should have been stopped immediately. I'm a private detective. I'm from Connecticut, but I went to the University of South Carolina. I'm not an engineer, but I could figure out what the problem was very quickly. And that's unfortunate, but I think that you have these problems throughout the country. You've had them and you still have them that everybody's trying to make a fast buck on the bridge you're talking about. Instead of using the materials that they should have, they ended up bringing in cheap Chinese steel, which is not working. And I've got two or three examples of that occurring just here in Charleston. Now, this morning, driving in Charleston, because one of two major bridges 
has to be closed because of construction defects. Uh, everybody's sitting in traffic all around Charleston, including mm-hmm. ambulances, trying to get people to the hospital. And that's criminal, but nobody cares. Nobody gives a damn. All right, so when we look back in the heyday of New York City, New York State's infrastructure projects, which were in the late 50s, early 60s, there was a guy by the right. name of Robert Moses. He ran the show in New York right. in New York City. He built more highway in New York than there is out in LA, which most people don't know. New York has more highways miles than LA. And right. the thing was he was totally corrupt. All of the road builders, all of the infrastructure people were corrupt, but there was one thing that he demanded and that there was no cutting back on the quality and you see it in the New York Triborough Bridge, the Verrazano Bridge, the Throgs Neck and the Bronx Whitestone Bridge, those bridges are getting upwards of 90 years old. The uh, George Washington Bridge, you know, that's 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 80 some odd years old. And they're, you know, they the maintenance has been pretty consistent, not consistent enough in some instances. But overall, those bridges, there was never a failure on any of those bridges. They were over designed, over engineered, and they'll probably be around another hundred years. You look at the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, other bridges in New York, tunnels, you know, they were all, you know, you can't deny the corruption that took place in the contracts and the change orders and the theft, but the quality of the underlying project was always paramount and was never compromised. Now we've gotten to the point where these contractors and all the interest involved, the consultants, everybody else are cannibalizing the project, sabotaging it to make more money. I mean, these people have no conscience. Right. When when I was uh, doing an investigation for the University of South Carolina and the University of Munster on actually on the Great Gatsby, the the uh, Fitzgerald based him on a real person. I was in New York researching and I ran across a person that was very close with Robert Moses. Um, he was a, a re, an editor for the Queen's Tribune, if I remember now. And uh, at any rate, Uh, He told me things about Robert Moses and, you know, for all his faults, as you said, as far as construction was concerned, you know, he knew what he was doing and he demanded excellence. He was involved, of course, also in the World's Fair building that. That's how my editor that I met knew. (laughs) Yeah, that's another story. (laughs) Circumstances. You've got to understand these bridge failures now make no sense. The bridges you're talking about in New York. 80, 90 years old, they, 80, 90 years ago, they didn't have the equipment, the engineering knowledge that they have now. They were working at such a slide rules when you look at what's available now. <laughs> yeah, that was had, a very good point that you brought up. They had slide rules. They had engineers right. with slide rules. So they had to over-engineer everything. But nonetheless. And they're, yeah, they're, they eyeballed it. Yeah. They, they never had any any types of failures like an Oakland Bay Bridge, like that bridge down at FAU. Now you are familiar with the company that was building that bridge, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And Fig, Fig, I believe. It Fig, is. F-I-G-G. Yeah. What's their deal yeah. and how could this happen? Again, you know, when you bid something and you figure you're going to have to spend $40 and that's your cost, and you do it for $10, you know, that's, it's, it's the same problem that you brought out you know, with the bridge that's using the Chinese steel. You, you try and cut corners. In the case of what occurred in New York, um, from what I knew about Moses from this editor that I met, yeah, he, you didn't play with him or you didn't, or you didn't work. Yeah, worse than and that. You went he up. Had standards. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He had standard. I mean, he ran that like a fiefdom. He ran yeah. the Brooklyn Dodgers out of town. Correct. And so, you know, as far as far as Moses, you didn't play with them. There was no Robert Moses here. There was no Robert Moses in San Francisco or down there in Florida where you are. All they mm-hmm. are are people trying to make a buck, greedy people, selfish people, you know, but that's the way that's that's the way things are in this day and age. Nobody gives a damn. Well, take for example the bridge that fell in Florida. Six people died as I recall. But the people that are in Daytona, it doesn't affect them. 
or the people that are in St. Petersburg. Like our problems here in Charleston, uh, it doesn't affect the people in Columbia or, Greenberg, or Greenville. So, you know, there, there's, there's no reaction. You see. And it's very sad and it's aggravating. $9 million back in 89 to correct the problems that I know they did on purpose. I have the proof. Nobody went to jail. Nobody was prosecuted. I gave the pile driving form and it verified everything to the, to the state of South Carolina sled. I was working with the FBI, you know? They're too busy uh, doing crazy stuff instead of protecting the public. You're talking about lives that are lost. You know, when you have a bridge failure, where a community is depending on those bridges. Absolutely. And we've seen it over and over again. Uh, the thing is, anytime a bridge collapses or infrastructure fails, any place in the country, everyone needs to be concerned about it. You need to be concerned because the same people working on that bridge or that project are probably working at one pretty close by to your home. And just like That's you knew about right. FI just like you knew about FIGG and the others. Uh, look, if we don't start taking it serious and understand that the system itself is a national system, the reason, one of the biggest reasons for the United States relative prosperity, especially in the 70s and 80s and even further on, was the interstate highway system. It was revolutionary for its time and right. it really uh, connected the country, enabled a transportation of goods and services on a scale never before imagined. You know what the amazing thing here is, Howard? If you look at what China's doing, I was there 20 years ago. Their bridges were really poor quality, but they're pretty much mm -hmm. emulating our interstate highway system with a couple of minor exceptions. The right lane is wider because uh, it's easier for trucks, safer for trucks there. And the, and the way they do on, you know, uh, junctions, entrances and exits is more in keeping with current uh, developed theory. But even right down to the colors on the signs, you know, when the United States built this system, they had to figure out what color should the signs be. And that red and blue sign didn't just get somebody said, gee, it looked nice, red, white and blue. They actually tested that out and figured out that that was the most visible color combination for a highway marker. All of these things, mm -hmm. all of these things. And somehow we've completely lost our way and we don't know what we can't do anything anymore. But that's the way of society. That's the way of politics, whether you like Trump or not. The guy has not been given a chance. All of these problems, let's get to the infrastructure. He nailed it. The guy is a builder. He knows what it's like to put up a wall. He knows what it's like to build a road. He, you know, he's got the knowledge of all these things. He knows the infrastructure needs to be fixed. I know it. You know it. Congress doesn't give a damn. You know, they want to play politics. The guy was elected, like him or not. I supported Obama when he was elected. In other words, you know, he wasn't my favorite person. But the point is, when you become president, the country needs to come together. You want to do battle? You do battle in four years. A senator, you do battle in six years. You don't cripple somebody. And I mean, when you listen to these people that are talking, things that they're saying, they're talking through through the side of their mouth. <laughs> and, and, you know, it's, the corruption is all the way up into Congress. These people are morons. It's the fault of Congress, I think. And, and the, the former presidents, none of these guys knew anything about construction. And just the way they've crippled Trump, like him or hate him, makes no sense. Legitimately, he's the president. He was elected to fix the infrastructure and a wide range of other things. You know, stop getting in his way. Hey, you want to fight? Fight yeah, in, in 2020. Yeah, save it for the election. I totally agree with you. So one thing Trump did, and it was like almost two, three months after he was inaugurated, he went down to the Department of Transportation and he said, all right, here's the deal. It takes 10 years for you guys to approve a little... Uh, 
exit ramp off of an interstate, that stops now. And that's all because of the right. consultants and everybody that feeds off of this corrupt system. He says, from now on, you exactly. will get one project manager. You're not going to be handed off. And we are setting a goal of 12 months, I think 12 to 24 months. I don't remember the exact amount of time, yeah. but that, that, should go, right. that should go a long way because they keep on designing and redesigning and redesigning. And, you know, you look at certain things and certain ways roads go or exit ramps and you say, this was the stupidest thing I've ever seen. There's one like uh, by where I used to live in, in Palm Beach County, Florida. And when you're driving along a road and you're heading west, all right, the first thing you should hit is the entrance ramp, the northbound entrance or entrance ramp. And then the second thing you should come across is the southbound entrance ramp, right? Because that's the way people right. expect it to be. No, that couldn't happen here in Florida. They spent like $50 million to reverse the ramps. There's constant accidents of people saying, oh, I think I'm going uh, north. Oh, no, this is south. And then they cross over and they get hit by cars and trucks. Constant accidents right. there. Stupidest mm -hmm. design. I mean, what kind of moron came up with this? I mean, there's, you know, the, the modern technique for entrance ramps are flyovers so that you don't have traffic coming on and entering in a very short uh, distance, which causes accidents. So they put these flyovers in there, but they had, they kind of forgot the order that they should have been in. And you know that that's strictly a result of probably in all likelihood, the federal government saying, you know, you're going to go through a wetland here. You can't do that. Or them micromanaging a project that they had no business micromanaging. Now you're, you're right about that. And, and, you know, once you get these political circumstances taking precedent over engineering, you're going to end up with problems like that. And people will, will have accidents. People will die, you know, and it makes no sense. But we, we, we've gotten in, we got into such a boondoggle when it comes to construction. And fortunately, Trump dealt with that his whole career. Yeah. So that's one of the first things he did. Like you said, he said, we're going to change that because I've seen it. I experienced it. I know the problem. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, George Bush and Clinton, they, they had no idea. They were hacks. I mean, look. If you want to, you're a politician. Yeah, well, you know, same that's difference. What a politician does. Same thing. Obama had no idea either. You know, none of them no. knew. Look at what they no. did with the big dig in Boston. Another perfect yeah, example. That's an example right there. The tunnel. An example right there. You know that the the uh, panels were falling off the ceiling because they used, and this was Bechtel that was involved in this, and they used a mm -hmm. a slurry project uh, process where they're pouring concrete in place as they're digging out the tunnel and it wasn't really well thought out. It's a legitimate process, just like that design and build in place is legitimate, but you can't have, you can't cut corners when you're doing a bridge where you're building it and designing it in place. You can't cut any corners because one thing you wind up with an FAU collapse, like what we had there, the FAU bridge, perfect example. You nailed it right there. You can't, cut corners but these contractors don't care it's money in their pockets they know that and there is just not enough oversight like you said the engineers so they're making 60 80,000 a year nine million dollars just on one on the piling problem in charleston and that's nine million dollars in 1989 dollars not to 2018 dollars yeah. Total corruption. So, you know, there's a lot of money to go around. I could tell you stories that on my investigations of corruption with law enforcement, in addition to problems with highway construction and infrastructure, but it's all the same problem. It's graft. Mm -hmm. It's a society that just doesn't care about the guy next door. If it hits me in, my, in the face, I'm going to react. If it's going to hit you in the face, hey, I feel sorry for you, but I'm going to go about my business. Yeah, and it's it's one big problem. It's not 50 individual problems or several hundred countywide problems. It's a national problem because the whole system is one. And I think, you know, Trump's Trump's view of this, uh, there's so many uh, 
techniques available for building highways now that are so far superior that you mentioned to when they built these bridges, when they built the original interstates. I mean, those bridges should last forever now, and yet they can't figure out how to do it. And if we had true, if we had a true effort to up our infrastructure and the techniques, technology being used, that a lot of this, these roads would last for 40, 50 more years and we wouldn't have this infrastructure problem that we're suffering now. That, that's exactly right. But by and large, Americans are lazy and, as I said, selfish, look out for themselves. What, what happened in Pittsburgh, I did a show in Pittsburgh. What happened in Pittsburgh with their failure, Philadelphia could care less. They needed to care less because, it's like you said, that was, uh, again, a very good statement. The people that were working on the Pittsburgh Bridge are probably working on stuff in Philly. But people don't, they can't make that connection. It doesn't hit them in the face. Hey, I'll just go about my business. It's a sad state of affairs. And it's not just with highway construction. It's with every facet of society, I think. Uh, You have a really uh, valid point there. It's unfortunate. And what we have to realize is, you know, Howard, that we're all in this together. And just because I'm not your next door neighbor doesn't mean that I am not affected by it because it's a system that's corrupt and needs major revamping and major, major accountability. People need to go to jail for this. And hopefully in Florida, there's such outrage over that bridge. You can't even imagine, even though, you know, because it happened on a college the whole concept right. that it was female engineers and female designs, which really have nothing to do with it. I think it was nothing at all. It was probably a minor latent design flaw that got really uh, multiplied, amplified by the fact that uh, that there was a construction flaw uh, that they handled the uh, placement of the bridge improperly when they lifted it into place. Uh, so, right. so it's kind of like, you know what it's like uh, when you have a, a youthful driver, we had this course, uh, you know, driver's ed, and there was a movie I remember called The Final Factor. And it wasn't that the tires were bad. It wasn't that the brakes weren't that great. And it wasn't just that the rain, the road was wet. The final factor was the driver's inexperience. And that's what you have here. Right. A multitude of factors all combining to create a disaster. And first and foremost is corruption and and politicization of the entire process. Just let the engineers design it and don't let them uh, be unduly influenced by the contractors who want to maximize their profit. We might start making some progress. Howard, people want to find out. You're right. People want to find out more about you. Check out your website and see the work you're doing. Where do you go? You can go to ComanDetectives.com and all the, my information is on there. You can call me at 843-571-2667. And I've written a book about my investigation called Angels on the Bridge by Howard Coleman. I've all right. detailed all of the investigation, how we got there how we found out, you know, about what was going on and the interfaith element of all of this. There's a metaphysical side of this as well that brought us to really Hasidic rabbis in terms of where our information came from. But all of that has, is, is in, the, in the book Angels on the Bridge, and it's, uh, it was, it's been an exciting adventure. Unfortunately, the adventure is not over yet. Hey, we were heading in the right direction for the first time. Look, if Donald Trump, if he was overseeing that highway, do you think he would have put up with that? No, not not at <laughs> no, all. And, he would have know, kicked their asses off the project. No question. They would have never worked in that town again. You know, I know it, Trump. It was like so. Robert Moses, you know? Yeah. I mean, Moses would have done the same thing from what I understand. But oh, God, Anyhow, yeah. I, think that, I think that you and I, uh, we made a dent. We, hey. what, I think what you said, very astute. And what I said complimented what you were saying. Well, I, so I think that if, if, if this goes out, we'll wake up a few people, not a lot, 
you know, but it only takes one or two people at a time. It's all part of the same corrupt government that is destroying the country. And, you know, the government's corrupt because the country's corrupt. I mean, let's face it, it's all connected. You can't just separate one from the other. But this is a real concrete example of how this corruption and this incompetence, they join together and they kill, it kills people. And you could... You know, look, uh, there was a dentist one time riding, minding his own business, uh, riding underneath the FDR bridge, uh, the FDR drive, which is the main highway in New York City. And a 500 pound chunk of concrete fell down, crushed him and killed him. All right. That is the most random of deaths. And if it could happen to this person, it could happen to you. It could happen to me. What if you or I, or what if you're one of your children were driving a car under that bridge? It's not the type of thing you expect that a bridge is just going to collapse and kill you, come crashing down and pancake your car. So this is really important. And it's just a symptom of an underlying corrupt malaise that isn't just in Washington. It's in every it's in every state capital and it's in every county seat in the country. You need to be aware of it. Howard, thank you so much for coming on. Thank we will you talk so to you much. again. I enjoyed it. Hey, likewise. It very formidable. Well, thank Take you. Good luck on the book. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.